Guys, I got a doozy of a teardown for you today. Keep watching. I imagine that you spend about $100,000 on a GTR and it's supposed to make like 15 and change. And you're so excited that you take the car out and you're beating on it. And then six hits later in the same evening, the car comes apart. What could happen here? That is what we're going to uncover today. It's absolutely unbelievable. And you will not believe it yourself. So keep watching. Now we're going to go over this head first. This is the right bank. So somebody put this little tag on here, you know, because the head says right on it. You could figure out what side it goes on if you actually build engines, but you know, make sure that you know which one is which. And it's CNC ported, uh, not by head games. They uh, remove a lot of the quench pad, which is kind of cool. And they got bronze guides in here. The seats look very beat up, like very, very beat up. Like there was a lot of valve flow going on. You can see that, how it's like real shiny here. That's from the valve just beating itself into the seat. And that is, you also see a lot of oil, but you notice how like this side is clean. And then this one is oily. And then this one's pretty clean. And what this tells us is that there is definitely some water to enter the combustion chamber. It definitely, uh, you know, some antifreeze or something. That's how it gets cleaned. It doesn't get cleaned unless that happens. And then this one was just oiling its face off and all the oil went through the exhaust port. Notice how gigantic the exhaust port is. This is definitely a gasket, guys. So somebody thinks that you can open the head up by the gasket and it's instantly going to flow better. But then they leave the guy bosses in there and the port's actually smaller inside. It just made real big on the exit of it, which makes zero sense to me. So all the exhaust ports in here are gigantic and let's keep moving. The intake port actually I actually like the intake port. I like the little fin here, I like the little fin here, and we got bronze guides. I I really can't say much bad about the intake port. I think it looks pretty good, and I'm sure it would run really well. And this is where stuff got interesting, because if you'll notice how this chamber is shaped, and over here too, and you'll notice that the second head doesn't have that. So the left head, the chamber is not shaped the same. Also, if you'll notice, there's a different color in the valve seat. So this guy had CHE seats put in on the exhaust or maybe the Namco. And then they have a nickel bronze intake seat put in there. And then this one has OEM valve seats. And this one is hand ported. And this one is CNC ported but they came from the same engine. How is that even possible? That's not all of the differences, but let's go over this head too. Here is one thing you can look at. So this is this cross-sectional area of this exhaust port. This thing just barely touches on oh, it. Just barely, barely squeezes out of it. And then we take it over to the other head. And holy crap. This is what I was saying, guys. I mean, this guy, whoever ported this really thinks bigger is way better. So just to clear the air, I want to say that when you make an exhaust port bigger, as big as it can be on a turbo car, what that would do is make it longer to spool. Even though if you were to look at the flow sheet, maybe at the high lift, say like four or 500 lift, this head might flow more, but it doesn't mean it will work better on the car because A, we don't have that much lift, and B, the port is just too big and it can't be supported. More of the same on the intake side. Here we have, this is the hand ported head and this is the CNC head. You can see there is, there is room to go, but I don't disagree with this port. The intake port is not that bad, but definitely a size difference to be on the same engine. But wait, there is more. Now we have, let me show the intake valves first. You notice that they are a different color and they're wearing differently. 
This one is more full of oil, and this one is not. This one has a lot of valve float here. You see it's like beat into the 45 over here. And also there's heat that goes up the stem, almost up to here. There is a lot of heat in this valve. This one, not so beat up. There's like a little bit of an indentation, but you notice that there's really not a lot of heat that went up this valve. There's really nothing really to talk about. But on this one, you'll also notice that on the tip of the valve that has this little mark here, and that's from valve float. It was floating and not being happy. That is definitely, that's definitely a bad time on that one. Now the intake valves, you'll see a lot of the same. There's a lot of oil. There was definitely oil coming from outside of the engine. Anytime you see this on the backside of an intake valve, that is not coming from a ring or something like that. That's coming from outside the engine. Um, you know, it could be coming from a turbo or something like that, but you notice so this one, Again, lots of valve float on here, on the 45. You're obviously not gonna see a lot of heat on that. This one, lots of oil, very little float. I promised you different, I promised you more, but here you go. Two different valve springs, one on one head, one on the other. So we got a dual spring on one head and a conical spring on the other. Now, the retainers for the dual spring show some wear. And that wear, is that normal? Because titanium, I, a lot of, I know a lot of people have a lot to say about the wear on titanium, but I've noticed in my career that titanium is okay as long as everything is okay. And this is what you'll see when it's not. So if you'll see a lot of wear here, this is from the spring just eating into the retainer. And then the conical spring, which you can tell is a newer build because everything looks perfect. There is no way these came out, you know, they, they weren't, they didn't have the same mileage, they didn't come from the same car, but you see that the retainer looks absolutely perfect, like it's brand new. This spring kit takes the longer valve lock, and then this head takes the OEM lock. Which is cool that they actually didn't mix these up. So of all things, like they didn't mix that up. Not only is the spring height not going to be right, but you run a risk of the valve pulling through the retainer because it's not meant for that lock. All right, so here is another situation. This valve spring is, uh, here's the locator for it. So if you put the locator in there, you notice that it fits. And that's because they know that the inside diameter of the spring hole, which we're talking about the inside diameter of this spring hole right here is 28 millimeters. And the valve spring should also be 28 millimeter and their locator is a little hair under 28 millimeters so that way it fits. But the problem is this no-go gauge, the valve spring doesn't fit. So the valve spring is bigger so we can put this one in there, fits right in, fits in all, you can see how it fits in all three. And this valve spring, we can take another one, so this valve spring doesn't fit. Now, what does this mean on this particular build? On the exhaust side, this locator, that this is the locator that locates this valve spring, and it sits outside of the hole. And it takes up the circumference of the entire hole and the whole height of it. So that way, when you go to put this dual spring in there, it works. It fits, you don't have to worry about it. You'll notice that on the intake side, the locator sits below the hole. So when it sits below the hole, the issue is gonna be that the valve spring that is not to the right size, doesn't actually fit in the hole. You kind of squeeze one side in there, but it literally, um, it's just wedged in there. It doesn't really fit the hole. And when you put the conical spring, it literally just goes right in. Doesn't, you don't have to press and pry or do anything like that. It just fits. Just to prove what I'm talking about here, you can see the shiny right there on this valve spring. And that's from it rubbing. I'm going to show you a couple more here. The 
see how it's just not fitting. So it makes this little shiny area here. And that's from it rubbing on the cylinder head. And you see this one was rubbing on a different side. So they're all rubbing. See right there, and it's making like a flat spot right there because they're all rubbing. And this just shows that just because it's made for your car doesn't mean it's made for your car. You actually have to measure stuff and make sure it fits before just installing stuff. The other thing about the conical is the conical springs actually has more pressure and more rate than the dual spring. You would think, oh my gosh, I need a dual, but the dual is not as good as the conical. The conical has 20 more pounds on the seat and 30 pounds open pressure more, and the spring rate is 310 on the dual and 330 on the, on the conical. So what that means, is you can run more boost, more RPM with the conical than this dual. I present you with the fix, and that is a brand new set of heads, well not brand new, New to him, set of heads uh, from Head Games. And they are CNC ported with the Head Games goodness. We got some GSC valves in there, a welded spot. So a lot of the guys, they use what's called a jack bolt. And the jack bolt, it's this bolt here, and they machine it. It goes on the back side of the wire jacket to hold this section right here. But in my opinion, it's kind of a half ass fix and I'm just not a big fan of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to not use jack screws. We're going to weld this area up and then just put a hole in here. So that way it still gets it maybe a couple, three holes. Um, and that way we don't have to worry about machining it for a screw that goes into a water jacket. And, but now we got CNC ported take ports. Look at that jazzy jazz looking delicious. We're going to reuse part of his spring kit. We're going to put a GSC conical spring in there. And this guy, look at that CNC exhaust ports, bronze guides, valve job. Take a looky looky with stock seats. All ready to rock and roll. This guy's almost done because we couldn't save this. It's just unsavable. That's craziness that somebody could purchase a head or even somebody that thought, you know, they have a hundred thousand dollar car and they're going to just bolt some stuff on and not look at anything and not care and not, and this is scary that that's, it's kind of scary that's even out there, but that's going to do it for us today. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Toodles. Head game.